Okay. Okay, hello everyone. I'm lo lovely to be here, I tell you. I'm delighted. So, of course, I will start sharing a personal story because I love stories. We love stories. I used to have a coaching client, top executive, top international company, successful guy, but there was a huge but. And the but was that nobody wanted to work in his team, and even his peers didn't want to talk to him very often. That was the reason of the coaching, of course. So first day, first meeting, I say, let's call him Mike, okay? Hey, Mike, okay, can you explain me what's going on? I want to know your perspective. This was his answer, I still remember. Carlos, I'm a 100% rational person. I'm honest and clear in my communication, and I am an expert in my field. People don't like to deal with this. Oh my God. <laughs> when I heard that, I said, Carlos, you have a long way to go here. Let's clarify something. Honest and clear communication had a different name for the rest of the company, his company. He was abrasive, harsh, is what we call a bully, period. So in another meeting, he says, Carlos, last week I had a very difficult conversation with one of my VPs. Juan, you know he's Latin, and you know these Latinos, they are so emotional. He didn't connect the dots, I'm Latin. <laughs> he didn't connect the dots with Davidovich, Latin, no, he said, no, it doesn't match. So what happened then? I saw an amazing coaching opportunity. And I said, Mike, you're absolutely right, these Latinos are almost as emotional as you. What happened after was the longest silence ever in a coaching session I ever experienced. And I was just holding myself, you know, not to say a word. He was just, listen to me. It took many meetings, many, for Mike to understand and to accept what I want to share with you today. Let's go there. I talk about five brains. Let's go one by one. We can say that we have one brain. Yeah, the one that we hear. With two sides of specialization, you know, the right side more intuitive and the left side more rational. That is not exactly like this today, but still is valid. But if we follow this guy, McLean, this guy was the first one that understood the concept of evolution, right? Evolution. Let's connect it with that. Evolution in our brain. He found out that nature through evolution, didn't replace brain, was adding one over the other. So, and you can see it in the image. It's not that we can split the brain in three, that's not true. Today, everything is intertwined. But the oldest one, you know, that may, I'm sure you heard about this, the reptilian brain or lizard brain, 500 millions of existence, years of existence, long time. And that has consequences. So let's explain what really was happening with Mike. What he said, I'm a rational, 100% rational person, was absolutely wrong. He was 100% a reptilian person. His reptilian brain was hijacking, you know, the rational brain and use it in a favor. That's what the reptilian brain does. Reptilian brain, basic functions, black and white, sustenance, survival, and sex. And please, maybe some of you think it's enough. No, we need more brains. Okay, that's not enough. So the point is, when I explained this to him and I said, Mike, I, I, tell me the following thing. Do you like to win all the time that you confront people? It was no conversation. It was a confrontation. And of course, he, he, he not, not even blink. And he said, yes, of course I want to win. Reptilian brain is zero sum game. So win, lose. There doesn't exist win-win. So, very typical. Then, then I explained to him, you, do you know that the reptilian brain is very contagious? So, reptilian brain awakes reptilian brain. And if you're attacking, what the rest of the people will do? Defending themselves, trying to run away. Even though reptilian brain activated, rational brain deactivated. So, they cannot be activated at the same time. So, I told Mike, Mike, how do you feel to use only 
50% of your people's brain. What was his answer? It doesn't sound too rational. Of course not. <laughs> sure not. So you're not taking, I mean, really care of your people. And you didn't care. You don't care. So then let's go to the next one. The next one is 200 million years old of existence. And it's what we call in the human brain, the limbic technically, the emotional brain. The truth is that emotion is all over the body. But the headquarter of emotions is right, is right there. And it's quite important. I, wish, I will explain to you just in a few minutes. The newbie, let's say the, the rocky in the black, is the rational brain. 50,000 years old with us in the way we know it today. In charge of the things that you can read there, of course. But what is the issue? We did so many amazing things through the rational brain. That's the reason that we have all the things that we have today. But there is another part. It's too, it's too new. We still don't trust this brain as much as the reptilian brain. And the reptilian brain is very influential. It's taking care of many things all the time. I don't want to talk about politics and all this stuff, OK? But the reptilian brain, you can see it in many, many places. Where does the most powerful magnetic and electrical field in the body come from? What do you think? It's not here. Any other option? Yes, the heart, absolutely. So one guy in the 90s found out that we have neurons cells in our heart. So similar cells that in our brain. What exactly that means, we still don't know. But I will tell you some anecdotal things. Number one, what is the saying in English when we know something very well? We say it, I know it by heart, right? Think again. I know it by heart. What do you mean? That the heart is a reservoir, let's say, a storage of memory? Maybe yes. When I study medicine, the heart was a pump. Boom, 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 pumping blood, blood, and that's it. In Spanish, the word remember, recordar, means to go through the heart and bring information. So this is interesting stuff. Could be that the heart somehow is storage in information. And the last comment I want to share with you. People that go through any kind of heart problems, heart attack, transplantation, anything, they have a higher after, higher level of psychological and emotional issues. So it seems like the heart and emotions are somehow connected. Let's go to the last brain. The one I tell you is becoming more and more popular lately. So let's talk about our gut brain. And here we have a complete nerve system. So, I, and with everything that is inside, that is in the topic of today. But the gut brain, we have a brain here, absolutely, that has different rules than this one. 100 million neurons there, a lot. And serotonin, serotonin is the main, you don't need to know, is the main component of happiness, a good mood. All the antidepressants work keeping serotonin circulating. 95% is produced in our guts. This is one of the reasons, not the only one, that our, let's say, digestive system is so connected with our emotions. No, no I will not give examples of that. <laughs> you know. So all of them are completely intertwined. So they are connected. They communicate with each other. And they, can, they are influencing each other amazingly all the time. What I want to share with you, from the five brains, only one is rational. So from the 100% of inputs that we receive permanently, only 20% is rational. The other 80% is connected with our instinct and our emotions. Please, don't tell me that it's enough reason to take care, to understand, to understand how they impact in our behavior and to try and to learn how to deal with them. Another thing that we didn't know before, that's a new, I would say I didn't study this in university. In all decision-making processes, our five brains are involved. But 
The final weight of our decisions, consciously or not, lies in our emotions. I always like to pause here, you know, because I know it's very provocative what I'm saying. What I'm saying is human brain is not prepared to make a 100% rational decision. Can I continue? Yeah? Fine. So, I love this. That's why I love to share it. In Chinese, this is the ideogram for thinking. And in this ideogram, there are two images. The upper one is the land or brain, and the lower one represents the heart. So in Chinese, 5,000 years ago, they knew that when we think, we involve some kind of emotions. Emotion and motivation, they, they have the same Latin root. It means exactly the same. That is movere in Latin, or to take action. So when we take action, whatever the action is, we cannot do it if we are not motivated and bring in some kind of emotion. What is the downside of this? That the word emotional had a very negative marketing worldwide. When we say somebody's emotional, we say it in a negative way. Oh, Mike, Mike has exactly the same bias. Latinos are emotional. It's not what exactly I'm saying today. What I'm saying is emotions, in a more subtle way, are influencing every single our decisions and mainly our actions. Donald Kane, neuroscientist from Canada, from Montreal exactly, he has this quote I love to share with you. The essential difference between emotion and reason is that emotion leads to action, while reason leads to conclusion. So don't get me wrong, we need both, but we need both connected. Make sense so far? So, I take a yes. <laughs> leaders ability, well it's not only leaders, all of us. To set a strategy, rational brain. To empathize with other emotional brain. But to take risk without a rational support, only we can do it with our guts. This is a language that not too many leaders know how to decode. This is an algorithm. It's a Google-like, much better. So got a lot of information and sent messages all the time. Not many leaders believe in this because like Mike, I'm very rational. What Mike finally learned? What he learned is to become a successful leader, we need to, lead, to learn how to lead first our internal team. All of us, we are leader of an internal team of five members. Each of them has a completely different personality. And they can influence each other all the time. So Mike was leading all the time through reptilian brain. What is the right formula? The right formula is to lead through emotional brains, but with positive emotions. I will explain this. And then the rational brain will give the best can to give, can give. And please, let's keep the reptilian brain as a first responder, only for emergencies. You know, survival, that's it. If not, we have a problem here. When I say positive emotions, I'm talking about, or being positive, I'm talking about something that is not connected with happiness or with being smiling all the time. It's not that. Being positive is merely the attempt to focus on solutions rather than problems, okay? It's an attitude. A guy could be very crampy, you know, all the time, but the moment there is something going on, hey, we're going to try, we're going to do it. This is being positive, what exactly means. Maybe some of you are asking, okay, this was the learning of Mike, but in concrete, what was the change in his behavior? The change was he started asking questions, never before. He started listening more to people around him, and even accepting others' opinion and decisions. People, that was a lot. So I was so happy. Check. Yes, we did it. What happened to me? 
But we're still friends with Mike, by the way. But what happened to me? I became an expert in coaching bullies. I don't know if that's good. But that's why I have a lot of them. You know? <laughs> so I would not work for them, but I have them. People, I want to leave you with the last uh, quote or last sentence. Remember, we are emotional beings with a brand new rational software. A rational software that we need to learn to trust. Thanks a lot for your attention. Thank you.